John here from RipeWave Audio, and for today's video, we are going to take a look at how we do ABC sound comparisons for AV receivers and AV processors with a brand new test setup we have that's capable of doing 16 channels today and can grow to more channels tomorrow as we see fit. And this channel here, we really have made a focus on AV processors and AV receivers. This is kind of the heart of today's immersive audio uh, setups. And whether you're doing something modest that is just 7.1 or 5.1.2 and growing up to the larger configurations, it doesn't matter. You're going to want to know which AV processors and receivers are going to give you the better sound quality experience along with all the other features. Now, of course, we have our feature reviews, which do detailed comparisons between each model and each brand. But there's always that question is, how do they sound? And for that, I believe the only way to do that is for our in-house testing where I get to hear this for myself and be able to relay to you my experiences with each of these products. Now I feel that just bringing in one AV receiver or one AV processor at a time is really not enough. I mean, I could come out at the end of the video and say, this sounds good, this sounds bad, and this sounds okay. But without a side-by-side -side comparison, do I really know if this sounded better or worse than the last one I tested? Probably not. So I feel that testing up to three of these at a time is a good place to start. And we're gonna start bringing in more AV processors and receivers. And uh, we're really excited about that, but we wanna do this in the right way. And I feel that unplugging and plugging in cables can uh, really slow the process down. So if I have to take the time of taking a, a set of cables, even if they're on a snake, and move it from one receiver to the next, or one processor to the next, that takes time. And I'm going to forget how one sonically sound sounded between the other. I want this switchover to happen as quickly as possible. So take a look at what we kind of got in mind here. And it's not just about how quickly we can switch over. I want to be able to keep certain components consistent. If I'm doing a test with different speakers and different amplifiers each time, uh, that's going to impact the results. Am I really hearing that the processor and receiver sounds better? Or am I hearing that I'm using better amps or better speakers? in that comparison. So in this way, we're gonna stick as much as possible to the same amplifiers, external amplifiers, and speakers as possible. And in our theater here, we have a whole set of Polk speakers over multiple generations, but generally speaking, these are their top of the line models, and they have pretty close timber matching between them. The front speaker, the center speaker, the surrounds, the rear surrounds, and the height channels are all from the same kind of caliber of Polk audio speakers. Now, one might not like Polk or feel differently that some other brand will give you better results, and you're probably right, but this consistency is what's important here in my mind. And at some point I might switch those out, but they're consistent. Now I have my subwoofers too, they're not Polk. I haven't really been too happy with, with Polk subwoofers. Here we have Rhythmic F18, two of them, two 18 inch uh, sealed subwoofers that we have in our setup. And uh, on our amplifiers, now we have a mix of Emotiva and a vintage Sony. Over time, the goal is to bring all my external amplifiers to balanced Emotiva uh, amplifiers. Again, you may have your preference for different amplifiers, but to have a consistent reference setup is important here. And I'm going to buy as much of their differential reference models 
that are fully balanced. Now I have my three mono blocks up front, but for the others, I might go to two and four channel models here. So if we look at this te test setup, where we're gonna do up to three AVRs or AV processors and connect it into all this, we're gonna need some sort of switching that will move it from a one receiver or processor to, processor to the next. And we do realize that some receivers and some processors don't have balanced connections. In fact, as you move into receivers, you're more likely to have unbalanced connections only. And those are represented by the blue line. So wherever I have a blue line, it's an unbalanced connection. And wherever a green line, it's a balanced connection. So I want a switcher that can be able to handle both on, on this setup and feed those same amplifiers and speakers. So here, uh, currently in I, my setup, I have the Emotiva RMC1, which is a balanced output for 16 channels. And then we have the Marantz Cinema 50 that is less channels and unbalanced, but we want to be able to bring those in. Those are our currently in-house long-term reviews, and then bring in short-term reviews of perhaps things like the Anthem AVM70, as pictured here, could be a good candidate for the future review. And if that other unit that we're bringing in happens to be an unbalanced option, well, we could deal with that too. So here in this case, we're picturing the Emotiva MR1, which is their newly released um, value-oriented uh, receiver, and they have not done a receiver for a while. So this, is, this could be a very interesting one. Now, you might say to yourself, well, what about the amplifiers that are built into the receivers? Are you going to evaluate those as well? And the answer is, is yes. Now, I'm not talking about it in today's video, but I also have an AB switcher for speaker output. So I could AB between uh, two different uh, amplifiers and, and the output. So right now I have this wired just to the front speakers, and I think that's a good place to start is for, for amplifier comparisons, just look at the front speakers and, and do an AB with them. So I can do a quick switch between, let's say, the amplifiers built into the Marantz Cinema 50 and the Emotiva monoblocks and see how well they're doing. And we have a video that did just that, and they, the amplifiers built into the Marantz weren't that bad. So this is the test setup that we were aiming for. So as we comb through what's available out there for switching, now there are 7.1 switchers, but it don't, those don't give me the flexibility I really am looking for. I want to be able to uh, scale this system as I want to introduce, let's say, front wide speakers or more subwoofers or more height channels. And I can do that with this setup, setup just by simply adding in some more switches. So I didn't want to go with a 5.1 or a 7.1 switcher, and there's some good ones out there. What I did land on was the Nob Sound Duke Audio One Little Bear products, and I particularly liked this one. They have other combinations, and if you want to do something similar for yourself, you could look at the other models. They have an all RCA and an all balanced, but this has kind of got a combination of balanced and unbalanced on here. Three in, three out. So two of the ins are balanced. Uh, one of the in is unbalanced. And likewise for the outputs, one unbalanced pair and two balanced pair. What I didn't realize at the time I purchased this is it's flexible. So if I take something into the balanced input, I can then route that signal to an unbalanced output. Or if I brought something into an unbalanced input, I can bring it to a balanced output. So this gives us a lot of flexibility and, and choosing it. Now, I'm not doing a lot with the output right now, uh, but it's mostly the input part of this switcher. Now, the output is where I could do some additional comparison with external amplifiers. So if I wanted to compare, let's say, uh, an NAD, or a ATI or an outlaw audio amplifier against the Emotiva amplifiers, I could have one plugged into one of the outputs and one plugged into the, another output and switch between the two of them. Of course, I also would have to do the output switching 
to match that. Uh, so that's another way we can we can go about it. Or I could use a, a splitter to go into two amplifiers. So a lot of options there. And I particularly like this box. They're not big. They're 4.2 inches deep. That's 106 millimeters. They're 5.9 inches wide or 150 millimeters. And they're uh, 2.8 inches high or 70 millimeters. Another thing I like about this switch is it's passive. As you'll see there is no power or battery input to this device. No USB power, no IEC power, no hardwire power. Cord. This is truly a passive device. And if we look inside of this, we can see kind of this internal wiring that, that brings, they have this just circuit board here that um, passively switches between the different inputs and the different outputs. And the reports out there that from other reviewers are, this is not coloring the sound uh, that much at all. This is a, a pretty good fidelity device. Now, because we're running everything through the same device and the same cables, if there is any signal loss or degradation, each receiver and processor will be going through the same circuitry and the same cables. So therefore, it should be a fair comparison. Now I want to minimize that so I can hear as much of the processor or receiver as possible. But I do have that comfort knowing that if there is any loss, that they're all experiencing the same thing. So if one sounds better than the other, one's probably better than the other. This is their MC3 model, and I get these on Amazon for $70 a piece. Now, with each of these being a stereo pair, obviously I'm going to need more than one of these. I'll also need cables because this does not come with any cables. So for cables, again, I did my search, and I, I wasn't looking for expensive cables. I wanted to get something that was not uh, flimsy, uh, would hand up to some use over time and uh, give me that color coding that we have standardized on in Ripe Wave Audio as much as possible. So I, I didn't want to spend a uh, go wild on the cable cost. And again, like the switcher itself, any signal loss, if we're using the same cables for each receiver and processor, mind you that the balanced and the unbalanced versions are going to be different but that's the nature of balance versus unbalance. So for this, I looked at the, the Hosa technology, uh, these cables. I'm not terribly familiar with the brand, but I've used a few of their cables and they seem to be okay. And I was looking at the eight channel snakes because that's going to keep all that bundled together in a very nice way, but I couldn't find any 16 channel bundles that I felt were of adequate quality. But by using two, I can, let's say, take the red color and use it for both left and right. So if I take two of their snakes and use the red on one and the red on the other and just label the snake, either left snake or right snake, I've got it made. So our color coding is as such, you know, I've, I normally do black for the front but I also use green for center and, and red. So I decided to use red for front, green for center in this case. So we'll have two of those, one for left, one for right. Of course, center is just one channel in my case. Uh, blue we're using for surround speakers. Brown we're using for surround rear. Gray we're using for front wides. Uh, for top front we have yellow. For top rear we have orange. Uh, for subwoofers we use violet or purple and uh, we're not doing top middles I don't have top middles today but if we were we'd have white uh, in this snake there's no white color so if we add top middles we'll just have to add a white color somehow the 8 channel balance snake is the XLR 802 these are $60 a piece this is not inexpensive but it's not wildly expensive. It gives you a two meter length. I didn't want to make these too long, but two meters or 6.6 .6 feet is uh, good enough. I could set one of these uh, test receivers or processors out in front here and run that six foot snake, and that's gonna be pretty good. 
Now for the unbalanced side, also with the same brand, also with the same color coding, eight channel snake, RCA to RCA, these are a lot cheaper. These are just $23 a piece. Now, I do realize that sometimes I'm going to have a processor or receiver to add as the third one that's going to be unbalanced instead of balanced. So what do I do? I've looked at these XLR mail to RCA mail adapters, and they sell these in a two-pack. I'm looking at the WJ STN, which are sold in two packs, for $12, six inches of length. So how I plan to use this is come out of the, the AVR or AVP that's RCA unbalanced on the back, single-ended, and use the adapter right there. So plug in male RCA, come out male XLR to the male uh, the female end of the XLR snake and then the male end of the XLR snake to go into the switcher. So this is this should work pretty well. So how does this all come together as the cost? This is not inexpensive to put together even though I'm not picking very expensive parts because you need a lot of parts. So for the switchers because they're each stereo pairs to get 16 channels, I need eight of the switchers at $70. So that's $560 just in the MC3 no sound switchers. Now for the balance snakes, this is the Hosa XLR802. These are $60 a piece. I'm going to need four of those, right? So if I have two inputs of the switchers, but then I have 16 channels, so I'm going to need four of the XLR snakes that are eight channel, and that's going to bring it to $240 just for those. The RCA snakes, I'll only need two because there's only one input that's dedicated to RCA unbalanced on these Nob Sound Little Bear switches. So I'll need one set of those, so I'll need two of those to get 16 channels or $46. Then I'll need the adapters. So these come in two packs. So a stereo pair for $12 or $6 for one channel. So I'll need eight of those to get 16, which is $96. If you add all this up, it comes to $942. So just under $1,000 to do this test rig. And so if you look at this AVR by AVR, we've got, let's say, input one on the switch will be for AVR, AVP1, will be fully XLR balance. We've got, let's say, the second AVR that's unbalanced, we'll use two of the unbalanced cables. And then for the third one, we're going to use balanced cables, but optionally, sometimes use the adapter, sometimes not, depending on whether the AVR or AVP is balanced or unbalanced on its side. Now on the case where we showed, let's say, the Emotiva MR1, we should be able to use that cable and uh, do adapters for everything but the subwoofers and then run the subwoofers directly balanced without the adapter. So we have a lot of flexibility here. So what are your thoughts on this test setup and are you excited about Ripe Wave Audio doing more head-to-head -head comparisons with AV processors and receivers. That feedback would be useful to the Ripe Wave Audio community. If you want to take your involvement in this community to the next level, consider going to www.patreon.com slash ripewave. That would be appreciated, but you could always do a one-time donation uh, show your appreciation. That's, that's really helpful to us. You can see the money that we're putting into this channel here. Your contributions help so much for us to advance things. Regardless, you can always hit that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.